Elias. I'm the uh, I'm the chairman of the club, and I have been for oof, about eight or so years now, I think. From memory. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alan Lowen, I'm the director of rugby at Royal Wooden Bassett and uh, yeah, I've been here, this is my eighth season with the club. Um, the club run from under sixes all the way through to senior rugby, um, we're currently running what we'd say sort of three and a half senior sides, we're just on the cusp of getting a fourth team up and running. Um, we've got a new girls section currently running um, under 13s and 15s um, and hoping to expand that again next season as they go through. Uh, we've got two cult sides um, ticking over which is great. and. Uh, our, our thought process when we uh, when we moved, uh, we had a brand new clubhouse facility <laughs> built, and we recognised that uh, having it busy on just a Saturday and Sunday for senior rugby and, and minis and juniors and junior rugby wasn't going to be sustainable. So there was no point having a fantastic building which is empty during the during the week. So we had a definite uh, a business plan really to make sure that the club was was busy Monday to Friday with uh, court. court corporate type events, business yep. business events, uh, and also and also busy during the, uh, the weekends as well. So our events are really uh, have two focuses really. We have um, you know club events which are generally focused on a on a weekend, yeah. yep. and then uh, a whole uh, range of business activities which take place Monday to Friday. Businesses. So I think it's always key to have. Um, a variety of core events that you run in week in week out which can help you cover your overhead and then your one-off corporate bookings which can come in then which will be probably be a higher margin business yeah um, which will then be the which will then be the, the, the cream for you really if you yeah. get your core if you get your, your core activities can cover your fixed costs you then take a lot you take the larger events which are more profitable and that's and that's your that's your profit and that's where you're in your bets basically Um, you know, we've got, we've got a number of reg regular bookings. So we've got um, uh, junior junior gym pre yep. preschool uh, activities. We have uh, slimming clubs. Uh, we have um, choirs uh, booking. We have, um, in terms of, we have a very high uh, wake business that we, mm -hmm. what we that we do. We have lots of uh, corporate events. Obviously, they're quietened down in the, during the pandemic as people are working yep. from home. But we, but we generally, we're lucky. We have a we have a large function room and we have a small um, conference room where we sit in at the minute. So we can, so we can offer you know a wide range of uh, of venues for, for people in terms of the numbers they want to have. A, if the businesses want to go away and have an away day, we can do we can do that, or. Uh, if they want to use the main room for a team building event or what have you, we're, yep. we're lucky that we've got the outside facilities. So we've had a you know a lot lot of corporates during the summer if they want to have family days. So we can run barbecues, bouncy castles, all that all that sort yep. of stuff. So um, you know we've um, motor rallies, anything like that. We do a, a wide range of uh, commercial events to keep this place busy Monday Monday to Monday to Friday. Number types of activities, so on-field activities and off-field activities um, for us, the largest of which is the sort of uh, end of season cider and sausage festival, um, yeah. which brings in sort of up to three, four thousand people through the gate on the day. Um, and as a club, we've used that as a, a really strong market, market, marketing opportunity to show people and showcase the facilities of what's here on offer. And we've engaged the town really well in that, so we use all local business providers um, for sort of front fair stalls, that type of thing, um, to bring people in. And we've also engaged the local military um, camp, um, so we've got a training college just down the road. They come in, we have a showcase game that day, and that, that is all based around um, the, the military squad bring, yeah. bringing their side in. So, And then through the year we run um, sort of various VPs events like most rugby clubs mm -hmm. will do. Um, I think 130 sat down this Saturday, which is going to be a busy <laughs> one. Um, and then at the end of season, the club events. So we, they run a Stars in the Rise, which is going out again. So that that was a, that's been a good event, and w we try to engage that all the way through the club. Um, so specifically like with the cider festival, we'll sort of allocate certain yeah. bits of the voluntary work to certain age groups, which helps. With that club feel and everyone sort of buying in, and then it'll be the same with the stars in the rise evening. Each of the age groups will be asked to sort of put, <laughs> put, put an act forward. 
Um, and it just brings people down to the club. And I think it, one of the biggest bits coming out of lockdown was, was re-engaging people and getting them in using the facilities. So the more smaller events that we've put on, we've done. Each of the age groups are running fundraisers, you know, race nights, that type of thing. So um, it, it's just that sort of family feel around yeah. the events during the season. Are we you know, take the sausage and cider festival with the McHugh Cup with the military. It started off as a small scale event and then gradually we've grown it. We've added on and you know, brought the local fairground right, right yeah. in. Then we've uh, in, had increased engagement. When the military see that it works, they've increased engagement from them. So they've brought in all their trades, their military vehicles, but again, more attractive for people to yeah. come and come and see it. And we've just built it, you know, as we've as we've gone along. Engaging local companies yeah. come in as well because they they've got their market reach locally, which has been good. So we use the local butchers. So yeah. they market it. They they've got a good sort of throughput of people coming in the shop. Um, and initially, when we started, we were using a local cider company as well, weren't we? Yeah. With Mighty yeah. Cider. So that, that, that helped bring people through. And, yeah. and looking, you know, there was always a historical beer festival, but it was, again, looking at those market trends to see what's popular now. Yeah. Um, and the beer festivals, they were slowing down. Um, so we changed, changed that over to a cider festival and it got a lot it's busier. In terms of the the events, if you've got a if you've got a clubhouse, and uh, you're looking to focus it towards the bus the business market, mm -hmm. you know you've got to provide a facility which is a, is of uh, a suitable uh, standard yeah. for businesses to come to. So you know in terms of a in terms of a maintenance program, the clubhouse gets painted every 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 12 months to yeah. make sure it looks spick and span you know the carpets get cleaned regularly the, the toilets are always always spotless yeah. because if you've got a corporate coming in they're going to be comparing you to the Devere or the Holiday Inn or something yeah. something like that uh, admittedly will be cheap will be cheaper but that's a that's the standard of service that they'll, yeah. uh, they'll be looking for and similarly in terms of if you're doing an effort food and beverage FB uh, offering as as well you, you have to be providing uh, a similar facility so that um, you know their staff are, are not going to feel that they're just having plastic sandwiches out of a blooming bought from Lidl or something yeah. like that. You know? So that's so that so uh, so that's that's very important. You know we've got to make sure whichever of our facilities you use, you've, we've got fully integrated AV si AV systems. So if they've got their laptop, they want to yep. plug in their PowerPoint presentations, they can uh, they can do that. You know if they want to run. Zoom presentations as 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 part of that part of that meeting. Uh, we've got the facility so they can do that, so they can so they can beam in speakers or other members of staff that can't can't make it. Yeah. Uh, all of those things really. You you really have to be looking at what your competition is is providing yeah. and make sure that you're providing something of a s similar, if not better, standard than what they are. Season effectively from mid mid May probably yeah. up until till August, so that then becomes very important. Saturday, uh, Saturdays, Fridays and Saturdays for the wedding market. Sunday for uh, for christenings. It's, so we we are very focused during the playing season that we don't mm -hmm. hire the club out on a on a Saturday on a Sunday yeah. for external events because that's purely player yeah. player driven and we want to keep people together. But in the off season, we want to drive as much revenue through the gates as we possibly can. So that's why the um, you know the wedding, the christening, the party market it becomes more and more important. Oh, in terms of actual uh, running the event, we've got one full full time member of staff okay. who works as our op who runs the operation side of yep. things, and all our bar staff then are, are all paid, but they're on zero they're on zero hours yep. contracts. Everything else then is run by run by volunteers. It's a welcome. Has met people before the before their event, event, so they know exactly how they want the club set out, what sort of linen they yeah. want, what sort of drink drinks they they want. So it, it really is that that face to face contact with with somebody, and somebody who takes ownership on the uh, on the day. So that's and, and it is it is yeah. a conduit really between the between the client and what we and what we offer. 
manager and the book, bookings manager, yeah. we would normally keep a uh, keep an eye out on the bar manager in terms of what's happening. We run it. We run a Google Calendar system, yeah. so all events get get logged on the Google Calendar. So that will, you know, that, that runs out until the end of the end of the year. So you've always got a um, a pretty live um, yeah. uh, system in terms of you can see what uh, what's on. That's reported on a tablet behind the bar as well, so bar staff can see exactly what what's on as well. Who's allocated to bar staff are allocated to certain events, timings, etc. So that so that works. Yeah, that works pretty well. I then I suppose really from you know, cradle to grave, you know, smooth smooth book smooth booking yeah. process. Early engagement with the, um, the people who uh, are, are booking. You know, some of some of them are return return clients, and yeah. you're not going to do so so much. But with new clients, getting them introduced to who's who's um, running the event, what's what's familiar. Um, invoice invoicing. Yeah. Generally speaking, we get pa we get paid before the event ha happens. Okay. So we're not we're not chasing, chasing yeah. debts around. Uh, very very important. You know we've got. We operate on a quick QuickBooks accounting system, so once things are booked, there's a deposit taken. People are invoiced before the event. We are we are paid, so that we we know that we uh, we're not suffering any um, any loss or hardship as a result of that. Generally, a follow generally a follow up meeting, see what's gone well, what hasn't gone gone well, or a telephone conversation. And I guess really from our perspective, you know, I was only given a card yesterday by a lady who had a, who's has had a wake for her husband the week before and it was just you know so complimentary in terms of okay. club staff so that's just, that's great service, yeah. off, uh, in terms of the ser in terms of the service and then we generally get feedback from um there's a local what's on ambassador web website where yeah. people feed back we had uh, a meeting with a meeting with somebody who were a potential we were a potential sponsor, yeah. um, and in turn they became you know we had a meeting with them they became they became a sponsor, uh, and they sponsored the the VP section of the of the club when they got to know the club the uh, some of the directors saw that we were running uh, Slimming World mm -hmm. and kickboxing they so they joined that on a personal capacity so they started using the club in the in the weekday. Uh, Following on from that, they saw that the uh, we were running a girls section, so the girls are just were thinking about doing rugby in school. Yeah. So a daughter daughter was interested, brought a friend along, so we got two extra three yeah. two extra girls. So we've got you know a business use. We uh, some of our clients are then picking up picking up additional clients on the result of that, and then we are uh, going full circle picking up extra extra players. So it's uh, and bring people through the door to watch rugby. So yeah. Um, we've gone into a new league this year, we're seeing new ideas of what other clubs are doing. I mean, just two weeks ago we saw a farmers event, I yeah. um, thought there was one that, yeah. know, do, do we begin to look at something like that in the future, you know, we're in a sort of fairly rural location as well, um, with good links into the agricultural um, sort of business. So. We, we wanted to make sure that we had the maximum exposure to as many markets as as, as, as possible so we run, you know we run a traditional traditional website which gets lots of um you know which is which is linked into the rest of the social med media feeds in terms of in instagram and facebook etc so that's very important in terms of members and what have you but we also thought that we'd uh, have a separate business website as well so that, so in terms of those people that were looking for court for corporate venues, there would be something that would sort of catch catch their eye in, in terms of their search en search yeah. engine results. We it, that makes it easier for us to link it, link in with LinkedIn as as, yeah. as well. So again, it's a it's a corporate market and it's a business personal re referral <laughs> system, uh, which which is better suited to um, to that sort of that sort of website. So uh, we just see them as two co two complementary yeah. platforms to um, to support the club. No, uh, no. Know your market and make sure that your your, <laughs> fac your facility is appropriate for the uh, for the market. Because uh, you know there are some smaller <laughs> smaller clubs out there are, are, are not going to be able to do the cor the, the, the corporate <laughs> events, and that's fully under fully understandable. Yeah. Where we were, we c we couldn't really do that. <laughs> but if you ha if you have got the facility, make sure it's in you know it's in top order. Yeah. Your furniture's are 
furniture's at attractive, you've got a good bar display, you've got welcoming staff, they're well, they're well dressed. Uh, all those things which when somebody walks through the door, they're going to say, wow, this is, <laughs> this is probably not what I expected yeah. from a rugby club. Uh, and uh, you deliver a service to, uh, to match. Um, yeah. and, and using others to then market. So um, I think with the rugby events where we've, we've done that with the, the butchers and the local cider company and the military, it's really um, helped us, us grow our reach locally. 